Uh, good morning. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We will now be going to the uh, final chapter of uh, our discussion in Philippine Constitution, and that is uh, the Bill of Rights. As uh, we have discussed in the uh, pre, uh, in the part one of the uh, uh, Philippine Constitution, uh, Bill of Rights is a mandatory provision of uh, a constitution for it to be complete. In other words, if uh, the constitution does not provide for the Bill of Rights, then that constitution is not uh, complete to deal with. Under the 1987 constitution, the uh, Bill of Rights is consisted of 22 sections. And I realized that uh, we cannot discuss it at once, so I divided the discussion. So, um, <clears throat> this is the definition of Bill of Rights. It is uh, the set of prescriptions setting forth the fundamental civil and political rights. Okay, just read it. But only one thing is certain. The purpose of Bill of Rights is to set limitations to the governmental powers or to the powers of the government. So I repeat, the purpose of the Bill of Rights is to give limitations to the power of the government. Because without these limitations, then kawawang mga tao, they Government can do anything that it wants to do to the detriment of the people. So, you may ask, what are these powers of the government? To tell you, there are several powers of the government. But for the purpose of discussing the Constitution, we must stress the inherent powers of the government. And we have the police power, the power of imminent domain, and the power of taxation. The police power is a power of promoting public welfare by restraining and regulating the use of liberty and property. In other words, Makiki alam ang ating government, sa ating liberty o kalayaan and property in order to promote public welfare or common good. That is the police power. The power of imminent domain, on the other hand, is a power of acquiring private property for public purpose. Kinukuha ng ating government ang uh, private uh, property natin and uh, it will be converted into public use or public purpose and the government must pay for just compensation. And the power of taxation is a power of raising the revenue to defray the necessary expenses of the government. So I repeat, the inherent powers of the government are the police power, power of imminent domain, and the power of taxation. As I told you a while back, the Bill of Rights is intended to limit the powers of the government. In other words, the Bill of Rights can be used against the government and it cannot be used against private individuals. So this is explained in the case of people of the Philippines versus Marty. To tell you, there are two cases that may explain this. We have the uh, people of the Philippines versus Judge Ruben Aison, and uh, second is the people of the Philippines versus Marty. I only chose to um, present 
the people of the Philippines versus Marti in order to avoid redundancy of discussion because the decision is the same. What happened in this case? Mr. Andre Marti, together with his, uh, with his uh, common law wife, <clears throat> went to a forwarding company. Ang ibig sabi ng forwarding company ay uh, yung nag, uh, katulad ng LBC, GRS, wherein they are uh, forwarding goods from one place to another. So they are carrying with them um, <clears throat> boxes. Okay, about four boxes. <clears throat> Tapos pumunta sila sa forwarding company. And uh, they ask the uh, employees to uh, deliver those uh, four boxes uh, to the uh, recipient. So it is an SOP or the standard operating procedure wherein uh, before it will be accepted by the forwarding company katulad ng LBC at GRS ay kailangan na i-check ng empleyado kung anong contents. Ang ginawa ni Marty, they just fill in the sheet being filtered in is indicating the uh, uh, specifications of the sender and the receiver. Nagbayad sila. And when they were asked, nabuksan ang boxes. Basta ang sabi ni Marty ay, pag na, those only contains books, cigars, and gloves. Tapos umalis sila. So, that created curiosity on the part of the employee of that forwarding company. Kaya binuksan niya ang box na yon, mga boxes na yon. And when the employee was surprised, kasi nakita niya, totoo, may uh, gloves and may plastic, tapos nung inangat niya ang plastic, may mga nahulog na dried leaves. So the employee suspected it, to be marijuana. So he asked, they, uh, he called the NBI and the NBI came and the NBI confirmed that it is dried marijuana leaves. So, uh, to cut the story short, yun, nahuli si Marty, kinasuhan ng uh, uh, violation ng uh, Republic Act uh, 6425, which was amended by uh, 9165. And uh, ang kanyang depensa ay under Section 2 of the Bill of Rights, whenever there is a search or arrest to be conducted, there must be a warrant to do so. Okay? I repeat, ang depensa ni Marty, under Section 2 of the Bill of Rights, kailangan na may search warrant kung isearch ninyo ang box na yon. When you search the box, there is no search warrant. This, the one who conducted the search is not in possession of search warrant. So, sabi naman ng people of the Philippines, totoo na walang search warrant. But who conducted the search? Is it the NBI? Which, who, who, uh, is it the NBI agents who are representing the government? Or the employee of the forwarding company? It was searched by the employee of the forwarding company. And that the one who conducted the search is not representing the government. So I repeat, under people of the Philippines versus Marty, it was settled that the provisions of the Bill of Rights, like the right against unreasonable search and seizure, can be used against the government only, and it cannot be used against private individuals. So <clears throat> let's go to another case, okay, to explain this. We have the uh, city government uh, versus uh, Judge Erikta. This happened at uh, Quezon City. Uh, medyo mahaba ang kwento ng kaso na ito. No? But uh, to cut the story short, this was what happened. Ang Quezon City ay uh, 
nag-inak siya ng isang ordinance na sinasabi na kayo na owners ng cemetery, dapat mag-donate kayo ng 6% ng inyong uh, tawag dito, uh, 6% ng inyong uh, lot okay? intended for a cemetery uh, and it will be uh, intended for Popers Burial. Ang ibig sabihin ng Popers Burial ay yung walang kaya sa buhay at hindi lang kaya mag uh, uh, avail ng uh, uh, hindi lang kaya mag avail ng, uh, na, na magbayad, I mean, no? ng uh, space sa cemetery na yon ay mandatory na bibigyan ng cemetery na yon because 6% of the space in the cemetery is intended for them. So, na-notify ng Quezon City ang mga uh, cemeteries saying that, okay, you must, uh, uh, you must set aside 6% ng inyong uh, cemetery intended for uh, Uh, Popers Burial, and uh, do not worry, magbabayad naman kami. No? So, the question is, is that a valid exercise of uh, power of imminent domain or valid exercise of police power? To tell you, no. Okay? To tell you, no. It, according to the Supreme Court, It is like a matter of confiscating a private property. It cannot be considered as uh, exercise of police power because the space in the public cemetery is not uh, uh, hindi naman yan nakakasama sa atin. No? It it is not like uh, an illegal article that must be confiscated and it is not also considered as an act of uh, exercising the power of eminent domain because in can in uh, conducting we will be discussing later on that in exercising the power of eminent domain there must be a complaint to be filed haalamin ng court kung okay tama pala ang complaint na ito so We will be proceeding with the imminent domain. So I repeat, it is uh, to cut this story short. What the Quezon City, uh, what the city of uh, I, the government of Quezon City did is it just confiscated the six percent of the lot of the cemeteries. So it is not a valid exercise of any governmental power. So, let's go to oh, <clears throat> this case is a little bit. Uh, uh, anong tawo dito? Uh, it is little bit uh, controversial because uh, it involves uh, hotels. The city of Manila enacted an ordinance <clears throat> that is requiring all the hotel goers bago sila papasok daw sa hotel ay mag-fill up sila sa, at, and they will be indicated some specifications they're in okay, mag-fill up sila sa isang logbook tapos, uh, at hindi lang basta-basta mag-fill up yun kung saan sila mag-fill up is directed to the, to the public kitang-kita ng mga tao i-indicate nila ang kanilang pangalan they will be, play, they will be giving their identification card or identity and they are going to prove na yung dalawa na yon na pupunta sa hotel ay mag-asawa so <clears throat> this ordinance was questioned by the uh, gr by the group of hotels kasi ikaw pa ba naman <laughs> Hot ang, ang business mo ay hotel you are promoting persons to go inside so that you will be having an income And you, but you are requiring them to uh, fill specifications in a logbook. Tapos kitang kita pa ng mga tao. Eh sino, na, eh sino pang mag-partner na papasok sa hotel na yon? 
isn't it? So the uh, a group of hotel owners questioned that. Sabi nila, government, you cannot do it. But sabi ng Supreme Court, this ordinance <clears throat> is constitutional. This is intended to promote public morals and to curb o iwasan ang prostitution or illicit relationship. In other words, this ordinance is intended to promote public good. Kasi iniiwasan na natin yung prostitution and illicit relationship. Ini-insure natin na lahat ng papasok sa hotel na yon ay mag-asawa, hindi yung magkabit. No? So, that, that is only an introduction of the Bill of Rights. We will now be discussing the uh, Bill of Rights from, one, uh, from Section 1 uh, up to Section 22, but we will be dividing the discussion, as I told you a while back. So, uh, you may ask, ilan ba lahat ang sections ng Bill of Rights ng 1987? It is consisted of 22 sections. But ilan lahat ang mga rights? To tell you, there are 25 rights. Bakit naging ganon? That is because there are some sections that are containing two or more rights. Like for example, the right to due process of law and the right to equal protection of laws, they are stated only in Section 1 of the Bill of Rights. And as I told you again, we will be uh, dividing the discussion of the Bill of Rights into two. We have the, uh, the first uh, 13 rights or the first uh, 11 sections of the uh, uh, Bill of Rights will be discussed in this uh, part seven and the succeeding uh, sections will be discussed in part eight. So, uh, yung 14 to uh, 25, they will be discussed in part eight, but in uh, one to uh, 13, they will be discussed in uh, this part, part seven of the discussion of the Philippine Constitution. So let's go to Article 1. I ask you to memorize this, isn't it? Uh, to my students, I ask them to memorize this as much as possible, sections 1 to sections 22. I, section 1 to section 22. So section 1 states that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall any person be denied of the equal protection of laws. As I told you, there are already two major rights that are stated here. And that is um, the right to due process of law and the right to equal protection of laws. If you were able to view the discussion of uh, Miriam Defensor Santiago in uh, the right to due process of law, according to her, all of the other sections of the Bill of Rights are already included here in this right to due process of law. Okay? <clears throat> due process of law. Ito ang kanyang definition. Is that which hears before it condemns, which proceeds to an inquiry and renders judgment only after trial. Ibig sabihin, before uh, declaring that a person is guilty or before giving the penalty, there must be a trial or there must be a hearing for that purpose. We will be going to the Elements of criminal due process. <clears throat> Do not worry because when you will be taking up your subject criminal procedure, you will be discussing uh, one by one these 
elements of criminal due process. So the first is the accused has been heard in a court of competent jurisdiction. You will be uh, learning, I repeat, in criminal procedure, if uh, when is it or when can we say that a court has a jurisdiction, uh, that a court has a competent jurisdiction over that criminal case. And there are three things that we must consider therein. We have the jurisdiction over the subject matter. We have the jurisdiction over the person of the accused and the jurisdiction over the territory where the crime was committed. But I repeat, you will be discussing that in criminal, in criminal procedure. So <clears throat> we will be going to the case of uh, consulta versus people of the uh, Philippines. <clears throat> what happened in this case? There was a person who was charged with uh, robbery before the uh, regional trial court of uh, <clears throat> Makati. So in Ulitwa, may isang tao, kinasuan siya ng robbery sa regional trial court ng Makati. So, um, ang una kasing magbigay ng, ganito kasi ang order of trial, ang um, unang magbigay ng ebidensya during trial is yung prosecution, yung biktima. Afterwards, followed by the defense or yung akusado. So, hindi alam ng akusado na yun at hindi din alam ng judge Ang abogado pala ng taong yon ay nagpanggap lang na abogado. Hindi pala siya totoong abogado. So, nung time na nagbigay ng ebidensya ang prosecution, ang akusado hindi siya represented ng hindi abogado. But nung time na magbigay ng ebidensya ang akusado, siya na ngayon ay represented ng abogado. So I repeat, ah, noong time na nagbigay ng prosecution ng ebidensya, ang, abuga, uh, ang akusado ay hindi represented ng, ay, ang akusado ay represented ng hindi abogado. Pero noong time na siya ay nagbigay na ng ebidensya, ang, uh, uh, ang akusado ay represented na ng abogado. So, noong na-convict siya, Sabi ng uh, akusado, dapat may new trial. Dahil nung time na nagbigay ng ebidensya ang aking kalaban, I was represented by a non-lawyer. So, tama ba yun? To tell you, he is not correct. That accused is not correct. If a person was not represented by a non-lawyer, at the start, of the uh, trial for his criminal case, particularly when the, when the prosecution presented its case. Uy, mukhang may mali sa pan, ah. PowerPoint presentation. Uh, when he was represented by non-lawyer, dapat yun. But he was represented already by a lawyer when he presented his evidence. There is no violation of right to due process and the right to counsel. Hence, the accused is not entitled to a new trial. I'm very sorry in relation to the uh, uh, presentation in this uh, PowerPoint. Dapat ang nakalagay doon ay, if a person was represented by a non-lawyer, no? nag-double negative yan. <clears throat> so, let's go to an administrative case in relation to uh, Lumikad versus uh, Axibia. Hindi ko alam kung ano ang tamang pronunciation nito. Basta as long as I am concerned, it may be Axibia. So this involves the former regional director of the Department of Agrarian Reforms of the Cordillera Administrative Region. Kinasuan siya yung dating regional director ng uh, administrative case. So, uh, this is in relation to his criminal case of uh, malversation. 
uh, you may ask, sir, what is malversation? Do not worry, you are going to discuss that in your subject, criminal law too. No? So, um, nakasuan siya ng, admin, ng criminal case at the same time, uh, administrative case. Oops, take it So, <clears throat> After conducting the uh, administrative uh, case, wherein he was not represented by lawyer, napatunayan na guilty or culpable ang dating regional director na yon. Kunestyon niya ngayon ang process. Sabi niya, when there was an administrative hearing that was conducted against me, I was not represented by a lawyer. Because of that, baliwala yung administrative case that was conducted. So, according to the uh, Supreme Court, this is in relation to administrative case. I repeat, ah, this is in relation to administrative case. Hindi criminal case. There is no law whether civil service act or the Administrative Code of 1987, which provides that a respondent in an, administrative, in an administrative case should be assisted by a lawyer or counsel in order that the proceedings therein is considered valid. So, in Tagalog, walang batas na nagsasabi na kung ang isang tao ay nakasuan ng kasong administrativo, ay mandatory mabigyan siya na ay, ay, ay mandatory during hearing ay represented siya ng abogado. So, comes now the uh, case of Attorney Romeo Arce versus uh, Lynn uh, Makalingay. So, this involves a former director of the uh, Commission on Human Rights. So, katulad ng, uh, like what happened in the former case, ang regional director ng Commission on Human Rights na ito ay kinasuhan din ng administrative case. So, during the hearing, the, uh, the former regional director of Commission on Human Rights was not given the opportunity to cross-examine the witnesses against him. Because we will be discussing later on that uh, one of the rights in a criminal case is to cross-examine the witness. Ibig sabihin, uh, yung uh, kinasuan ay magtatanong siya sa witness. What happened there? There was no cross-examination that was conducted. But inulit ko, ito ay kasong administratibo. So, ang pinaka-issue dito ay, in an administrative case, pwede bang mag-cross-examine uh, ang nakasuhan sa, sa witnesses against him, sa, sa mga testigo laban sa kanya? To tell you, no. It is not, uh, there is no violation of a person's right to due process before an administrative body. So, inuulit ko, ito ay kasong administratibo. Like the Civil Service Commission, if a party was not allowed to cross-examine the witnesses against him. So, in other words, kahit na kung hindi cross-examine ng respondent, yung nakasuhan, ang testigo laban sa kanya is still that administrative proceeding is valid. Kasi yan ang pagkakaiba ng administrative case at criminal case. No? So, uh, let's go to uh, Jacqueline. Hindi <laughs> ko alam kung ano ang pronunciation nito. No? Uh, pero huwag lang sana ng Jacqueline. No? Kasi medyo uh, <clears throat> pangit uh, pakinggan, di ba? So, in this case of uh, 
Hakulina, o oh, Hakulina na lang, no? Hakulina versus uh, uh, Napolcom. <clears throat> There were some policemen <clears throat> na kinasuhan ng criminal case. Ang kanilang kaso ay murder at frustrated murder. So, uh, sabay-sabay nang dininig ang kanilang kaso. May criminal case at kinasuhan, uh, uh, kinasuhan din sila ng administrative case. So, ganyan talaga kung ang isang public officer ay gumawa ng criminal case, kakasuhan siya ng criminal, criminal case, kakasuhan siya ng civil case, and administrative case. So, uh, during the hearing in their administrative case, they failed to present yung mga uh, they failed to present yung mga ebidensya na hinihingi ng Napolcom. So, uh, After they, uh, after they, uh, ano tawag dito? After the hearing, uh, they were found guilty or culpable. Question na nila yung, yung uh, outcome or yung output or yung result ng hearing. Sabi nila, they were not given the opportunity to present their evidence. Tapos uh, ang kanilang detention daw ay napakalayo kung saan sila nag-hearing. Tapos ang chairperson daw ng uh, uh, yung chairperson daw ng uh, investigating committee ay father-in-law ng kanilang biktima sa kaso. So pwede bang baliwalain ang uh, aligasyon ng mga uh, Respondents na ito because of uh, these allegations, according to the Supreme Court, no. It is a rule that in our Philippine jurisprudence, administrative decisions are entitled great weight. Kung ano ang output o decision ng isang administrative body sa isang administrative case ay binibigyan ng respeto yan. It is respected by the courts. Makikialam lang ang court kung may fraud, may mistake, o may uh, imposition. Okay? So I repeat, if there is uh, an administrative case being conducted by administrative bodies at meron na siyang result, the court cannot just interfere unless kung may fraud, imposition, or mistake. That was committed by that administrative body. So, let's go to, yun ako, paulit-ulit na to. Itong Nunn versus Judge Daines. In relation to, uh, this is in relation to, uh, paulit-ulit na na-discuss ito. Uh, Mabini College, there were 13 uh, students who were not allowed to enroll because uh, ang ginawa ng 13 na yon ay nag- Conduct sila ng strike sa loob ng classroom. Therefore, disrupted the classes. Kaya, what happened, what happened in this case was, may dalawang rights na nagbanggahan. According to the school, we have the academic freedom. At ang isang aspeto ng academic freedom ay pwede namin piliin kung sino maging isodyante namin. Sabi naman ng mga isodyante, We have the right of speech and expression. No? So, sino na sa kanila ang uh, respetuhin natin, no? So, according to the uh, according to the uh, uh, Supreme Court, the academic freedom will prevail over the right of speech and expression of the students. So, just recently, no? Just recently, may isang uh, parent kung anong-anong tinext na text niya laban sa akin at sinabi niya laban sa akin to the extent na sabi niya na I do not deserve to be the dean and ako you have the right of speech no but according to the case entitled Nan versus Judge Reigns we have the academic freedom <clears throat> and the academic freedom will prevail over the right of speech and expression So we will be going to 
equal protection of laws. As I told you, there are uh, two uh, rights stated under Section 1, and we have the a right to due process and equal protection of laws. So we will now be going to equal protection uh, of laws. So the essence of the equal protection of laws is those who are uh, similarly situated or all persons or things similarly situated must be treated alike. Kailangan na same ang treatment natin sa mga persons who have similar, uh, who are similarly situated. And this is also known as the equal protection clause of the Constitution. So the equal protection clause of the Constitution does not mean that all persons must be treated equally. The Congress must make a classification as to where that law is applicable. So what are the requisites of valid and reasonable classification of persons? So ito, dapat uh, ang mga tao na yan ay may substantial distinction. Ito lang naman ang pinaka-importante na kailangan na may espresso. Kailangan na may substantial distinction. Ibig sabihin, may pagkakaiba talaga ang mga tao na yan. For them to be classified or in applicable sa kanilang batas at ang iba naman ay hindi. To tell you, one of the things that may explain this is uh, in relation to uh, in relation to the Boy Scout of the Philippines. Uh, there were some members of the Boy Scout of the Philippines na binibigyan ng uh, uh, favor. Okay? Like for example, free umbrella, ganon. May mga classmates sila na hindi members ng Boy Scout of the Philippines kaya wala silang umbrella, wala silang payong. So, question yun. Sabi ng mga magulang, mag-classmate naman ang mga yon. They are enrolled in the same school, they are in the same year level. Bakit yung iba may umbrella, yung iba wala? Okay? To tell you, pwedeng sabihin natin na pagbigyan na natin, no? Nabigyan yung uh, members ng Boy Scouts of the Philippines ng umbrella at yung hindi member ay hindi na bibigyan. Why? Because they rest upon substantial distinction. Magkaiba sila ng sitwasyon. Totoo na sila ay mag-classmate. Totoo na they are enrolled in the same school, but the membership or non-membership in the Boy Scout of the Philippines makes a difference. Okay? That will create a substantial distinction between them. So, to explain the case further, punta tayo sa sikat na kaso entitled People of the Philippines versus Judge Vera. This is in relation to Act 4221. Lahat ng nakapagtapos ng criminology ay dapat na alam nila kung paano ipaliwanag itong Act 4221 na ito under uh, the case entitled People of the Philippines versus Judge Osevera. What happened in this case? <clears throat> there was a person by the name of Mariano Kuenjin who was charged and convicted of a crime. Okay, siya nakasuan at afterwards he was convicted. So, after conviction, pumunta siya sa judge at sabi niya, mag-apply ako ng probation. <clears throat> sabi ni judge, sus, walang probation sa province natin. Sabi, tapos sabi ng akusado na yan, hindi punta ako sa province na may probation. Sabi ni judge, nakalagay sa Act 4221 na kung saan ka na-convict, dyan ka lang pwede mag-apply, so no choice, kulong ka na. Oh, pala, uh, baka naguguluhan kayo sa discussion. Ang probation kasi ay ibibigay yan sa isang na-convict. Kung maibigay yan sa isang na-convict, ay siya ay mapapalaya. Pagsisilbihan niya ang kanyang uh, uh, sentence sa community, hindi siya makukulong. Kaya favorable talaga 
kung ang akusado ay mabi ay kung ang convict ay mabigyan ng probation no under act 4221 kasi ganito ang kanyang provisions uh, lahat kayo na ay kayo na local uh, provincial government ito ang ating probation law pwedeng may probation sa inyo kung may pondo kayo kung wala kayong pondo yeah, ipasensya na wala kayong probation This was what happened. Kaya may mga province na may pondo, may probation sila. Yung mga convict ay pwedeng palayain. May mga province naman na walang pondo. So no choice. Yung mga convict ay may kukulong. Lahat ng mga convicts ay may kukulong na ngayon. So, is the Act for 221 fair or unfair? In other words, is it constitutional or non-constitutional by violating In other words, again, is it violating, is Act 4221 violating the Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution? According to the Supreme Court, yes. Act 4221 violated the Equal Protection uh, Clause of the Constitution. The applicability of Act 4221 is not uniform throughout the islands of the Philippines because it endows a provincial board with the power to make said laws effective or otherwise in their respective provinces. So, ito ay uh, hindi siya naaayon sa ating saligang batas because it is now the privilege or uh, it is now the sole discretion of the provincial government kung meron probation o wala. E di unfair naman, katulad ni Mariano Kuenjing, na walang pondo, kaya walang probation. Mas swerte naman yung na-convict sa ibang province na may probation. No? So, so much for that, we will be going to, let's go now to uh, uh, section 2. The, uh, right against unreasonable search and seizure and um, unreasonable arrest. So uh, there are two, uh, we will be proceeding to the <clears throat> right against unreasonable search and seizure. There are two main uh, terminologies that must be defined here. First is uh, search, which is the uh, act of looking for something, and seizure, which is uh, the act of taking custody of something. So you are going to search for it, afterwards you are going to seize it. So it is search and seizure. So hindi pwedeng pagbalik ta rin ang dalawang yon. Hindi pwedeng sabihin na seizure and uh, search. When can we say that uh, A search and seizure is unreasonable. So let's go to the basic. That the search and seizure is unreasonable if there is no warrant to do so. Ganyan lang kasimple yun. If there is no uh, search warrant to conduct search, then they, it is considered unreasonable. It is considered unconstitutional. But there are some exemptions. There are some instances wherein there is no need for the policeman to be in possession of search warrant while conducting search and seizure. And this is known as the instances of warrantless search and seizure. So the first is consented, followed by search incidental to lawful arrest, plain view search, moving vehicle, custom search, stop and frisk, and in emergency circumstances, and we are going to discuss them one by one. First is consented. When we say consented search, kinonsente ng tao na siya ay kapapan. And there are some requirements for uh, consented search to be uh, considered as valid. So first is kailangan na nandyan ang kanyang karapatan against a reasonable search and seizure and he has a knowledge that he has 
a right against unreasonable search and seizure, and he has the actual intention to waive o baliwalain ang kanyang karapatan against unreasonable search and seizure. So, in search incidental to lawful arrest, if the arrest is valid, then it follows that the search is also valid. So if the arrest is in accordance with law, it follows that the search is also in accordance with law. So uh, the scope of search that may be conducted when uh, a person is lawfully uh, arrested, it is better for us to uh, discuss this uh, by uh, explaining the case of uh, people of the Philippines versus uh, Luisito Go, alias King Louis. <clears throat> this happened at uh, Calamba Laguna, where in, uh, there was an informant who went inside the uh, police station at sabi ng informant na yon, uh, Mr. Policeman, may isang uh, tao inside a uh, disco house that is known as the Flamingo Disco House uh, who is in possession of firearms at the same time he is delivering illegal drugs. At ang kanyang pangalan ay King Louis. So yan ang kanyang palayaw, King Louis. So the policeman went in the uh, Flamingo house and they immediately spotted King Louis. Nakita nila may baril sa kanyang waistline so the firearm was confiscated and uh, he was arrested. When he was about to be sent to the police station, uh, sabi ni uh, uh, King Louis, uh, pwedeng punta muna tayo sa aking sasakyan. So they went sa kanyang sasakyan. And uh, <clears throat> The policeman observed that there is uh, medyo suspicious ang kanyang uh, sasakyan. So they asked a, uh, a permission to search the car of uh, King Louis and uh, the permission was granted. So sabi ni King Louis, okay, search my car. So the car was uh, actually searched by the uh, policeman. And after conducting the uh, search to the car of uh, King Louis, a drug paraphernalia and uh, shabu were recovered. So yun, nadagdagan ang kanyang kaso. Uh, imbes na illegal possession of firearms lang, eh, nadagdagan pa ng illegal uh, uh, possession of uh, shabu. No? So, which is in violation of uh, Republic Act 6425 during the time, and I repeat that uh, Republic, Act, Republic Act 6425 was amended by uh, Republic Act 9165. So um, he was charged of uh, two crimes. Ang uh, depensa ni uh, King Louis, nung na-search ang aking sasakyan, wala namang search warrant ang mga polisman to do so. Because of that, the search must be considered uh, unconstitutional. So anything that is obtained must not, cannot be used against me. So tama ba si uh, uh, King Louis? In other words, ay uh, uh, tam, uh, mali ba ang pag uh, search sa kanyang sasakyan? According to the uh, uh, Supreme Court, Tama yung pag-search uh, kay uh, King Louis. So it is based on consent, but it is based on consented search. Hindi siya based sa search incidental to lawful arrest. Why is it that it was based in consented search? That is because he consented the policeman to search his car. So hindi siya pwedeng i-consider na search incidental to lawful arrest because he was not inside the car when he was arrested. When he was inside the car when he was arrested, then pati yung sasakyan ay uh, pwedeng i-search at ang basis ay uh, uh, 
uh, search incidental to lawful arrest because that is within his immediate vicinity. Take note, he was arrested inside the disco house, tapos lumabas sila, nandiyan ang kanyang sasakyan. No? So I repeat, that search in the car of uh, King Louis is based on uh, uh, consented search, but not search to incidental arrest. Let's go to plain view search. If an illegal article is readily seen without an effort of locating it, then that illegal article can be confiscated even without search warrant to do so. So to uh, this is known as a plain view doctrine. So under the uh, plain view doctrine, uh, as I told you a while back, if there is an incriminating object or if there are some illegal objects and it was readily seen by the policeman, then the policeman can confiscate that object and can arrest the person uh, that is in possession of that object. And I repeat, that is known as the plain view doctrine. To explain the plain view doctrine, we will be going to the case of people of the Philippines versus compassion. So <coughs> there was a barangay captain <coughs> na nadidinig ng mga polisman na may chismis uh, laban sa kanya na siya daw ay nag-aalaga ng marijuana inside uh, his uh, backyard. And uh, the policeman conducted surveillance in order to confirm kung totoo na may illegal drugs or may marijuana inside the uh, uh, compound of that uh, barangay captain. After conducting the surveillance, it was proven na totoo nandiyan ang illegal drugs. So it was reported to the uh, chief of uh, police. The chief of police, on the other hand, uh, immediately uh, made a, uh, a created a team and uh, they went to the judge <clears throat> to apply for search warrant. Sabi ni judge, uh, chief of police, uh, pasensya na, gabi na, it is already 6.30. So kung pwede lang ay balik na lang kayo bukas for the application of the search warrant. But uh, instead na bumalik yung mga policeman kay judge kinabukasan, they went immediately to the house of uh, Barangay Captain Kampasyon and they uprooted the marijuana plantation or the marijuana plants and they arrested uh, Kampasyon. So uh, Kampasyon was now charged with a crime. Sabi ni Kampasyon, uh, ni Barangay Captain Kampasyon, when uh, the search was conducted, the policemen were not in possession of search warrant. So because of that, that search must be considered unreasonable. It is unconstitutional. So any evidence that are obtained cannot be used against me. Sabi naman ng uh, policeman, it is true that we do not have a uh, search warrant, but we did it by virtue of plain view search. Ginawa namin yan because of plain view search. So the question is, is it in accordance with the plain view doctrine? So according to the uh, Supreme Court, mali ang policeman, tama si Kampasyon. The elements for a valid uh, plain view search are not present in this case. First, as I told you a while back, before the plain view doctrine can be, uh, can be applied, the policeman located the illegal article without any effort of locating it. In this case, the policeman conducted surveillance. They conducted an effort to locate the marijuana under the control of Barangay Captain Kampasyon. So because of that, the search is invalid and it cannot be used against Barangay Captain Kampasyon. Let's go to the um, case of uh, people of the Philippines versus Loho Wing. So Loho Wing, this happened way back 1980s, medyo matagal na kaso ito. 
So um, Lo Ho Wing is known as uh, a drug lord in 1980s na labas masok siya dito sa Pilipinas from China, Philippines, China, Philippines. Nalaman ng uh, kapulisan na ito ay possible na drug lord. So nag-employ sila ng tinatawag na deep penetrating agent. Ang ibig sabihin ng deep penetrating agent ay magpa may magpapanggap na uh, isang tao, didikit siya kay Lo Huing at magiging uh, uh, personal assistant ni Lo Huing, hindi alam ni Lo Huing na pulisman pala yun. Okay? That is known as deep penetrating agent. So, nag-employ sila ng uh, uh, deep penetrating agent by the name of uh, Mr. Tia. So, Si Mr. Tia, sinasamahan niya si Lo Ho Wing sa kanyang biyahe uh, papuntang China at pabalik ng Pilipinas. So, balik ng China na naman. When they were at China, napansin ni Tia na ang grupo ni Lo Ho Wing ay uh, uh, tinang, tinanggal nila ang contents ng tea bag. Ay, yung tea bag, yung ginagamit niyo yung tea. No? Yung sinasaw-saw sa, sa mainit na Uh, tubig. So tinanggal nila ang contents ng tibag at pinalitan ng methamphetamine, ng illegal drugs. Tapos linagay nila sa maliliit na cans. Linagay sila, nilagay nila sa maliliit na lata. So linagay, afterwards is yung maliliit na lata linagay sa bag ni uh, Mr. Lo Ho Wing. From China, they went here in the Philippines. Yun nga lang, 1980s na kaso ito, wala tayong masyadong, uh, we, we do not have, uh, uh, the airport has no capability to determine kung anong nasa loob ng maliliit na lata na yun. So nakalusok sa airport. So paglabas nila ng airport, kumuha sila ng taxi. And uh, when the taxi was moving, going to the uh, uh place instructed by uh, Lo Ho Wing, sila ay hinarang ng polisman, hinuli si uh, Lo Ho Wing, and uh, of course, yung uh, illegal drugs ay confiscated at ginamit laban sa kanya. So, uh, tama ba o naayon ba sa batas ang pag-search kay Mr. Lo Ho Wing? So, um, to tell you, yes, it is true that paulit-ulit lang ito, no? Under the general rule, every search must be done by virtue of search warrant. But there are some exemptions, katulad ng plain view search. In this case, ang exemption na ginamit ay search of a moving vehicle. Okay? Search of a moving vehicle. Take note, they're in a taxi, tapos plinag down yung taxi and there they search Mr. Lohuing. So um, let's go to custom search. The Bureau of Customs has the uh, um, capability to search imports and exports without the benefit of a search warrant. So that is custom search. So let's go to the definition of search warrant and their requisites. So ito ang definition ng search warrant. It is uh, an order issued in the name of the people of the Philippines, signed by the judge and directing a peace officer, commanding him to search for personal property described therein and bring it before the court. So nandyan din sa PowerPoint presentation ang requisites of valid search warrant. With respect to the definition of search warrant, it is uh, stated under the rules of court. But with respect to the requisites of a valid search warrant, it is uh, they are stated under uh, Section 2, Article 3 of the Constitution. So let's go to the uh, case of uh, people of the Philippines versus Ponsika. So, <clears throat> what happened in this case? Again, this is a 1980 case. 
so uh, there were some uh, rallies <clears throat> who uh, is a stage rally in front of uh, uh, the uh, municipal building of uh, Negros Occidental. So ang ginawa ng realista, they are not ordinary rallies, they blockaded uh, the highway. Ibig sabihin ay hinarangan nila ang highway. So uh, kumuha sila ng bato at ginamit nila sa pagharang ng highway. So the traffic uh, cannot move. No? Yung mga sasakyan ay uh, naistak lang doon. So because of this, napilitan ang... Uh, there were some negotiations previously. By the way, si Ponsika siya ang head ng rallies. There were some negotiations na kung pwede lang ay tanggalin nila ang blockade but they refused to do so. Ayaw nilang gawin. No? So ang ginawa ng... Uh, uh, ang ginawa ng uh, uh, ang ginawa ng firemen is they dispersed the uh, <clears throat> rallies using of course the uh, water cannon and uh, after dispersing the uh, rallies uh, the next thing that they did was the policeman arrested them okay the rallies so kinasuan sila ng uh, inciting to sedition dahil daw sumisigaw sila ng uh, uh, seditious words laban sa government so uh, <clears throat> pwede ba yon na sasabihin ng uh, uh, policeman na ay sasabihin ng fire, fire officers na uh, nadidig namin they are uh, uh, they are uh, shouting uh, seditious words so, uh, pwede ba yan na maging uh, basis ng pagkaso sa kanila? O pwede ba yan na maging basis ng pag-issue ng uh, warrant laban sa kanila? So, according to the Supreme Court, no. The uh, testimonies of the firemen and soldiers is stating that the rallies were shouting seditious words against the government is not sufficient, hindi sapat yan, no? To, uh, uh, for the judge to issue a warrant of arrest for the crime of inciting to sedition. So, kailangan na i-state ng mga uh, fireman at policeman kung ano ang exact words, hindi yung sasabihin lang na, okay, nadilig namin may seditious words against the government. No? <clears throat> so, let's go to the case of Bache versus uh, Ruiz. Uh, by the way, ang dinidiscuss kong ito is to explain the requisites of valid search warrant or warrant of arrest. So I forgot to read a while back yung mga requisites ng search warrant and warrant of arrest. So ito yun. Yun. So it must be issued upon probable cause. Tapos ang probable cause ay determined personally ng judge and uh, particularly describing the things uh, and place to be searched with respect to warrant of arrest naman i particularly describing the person to be arrested no so let's go to the second uh, element the probable cause is determined personally by the judge ang sapat na basihan ay dapat na inaalam personal ni judge hindi niya pwedeng ipasa yan so comes now the case of uh, Bache versus Ruiz. Anong na, what happened in this case? So, this is a 1970 case. There was a commissioner ng BIR, sinulatan niya si Judge. Uh, sabi niya, Judge, uh, bukas po ay may pupunta na agents ng BIR sa inyong office and um, mag-apply sila ng search warrant. No? Mag-apply sila ng search warrant. Sabi naman ni Judge, so perhaps baka nag-reply si Judge at sabi niya na, okay. During the time na pumunta ang agents ng uh, BIR sa, kay Judge, busy si Judge. Kaya sabi ni Judge, sinulat, uh, ang ginawa ni Judge ay sinulatan niya ang kanyang clerk of court. Sabi niya sa kanyang clerk of court, ikaw nga mag-interview sa mga agents ng BIR. Kung ano ang result ng inyong interview, yan ang aking basis 
kung ibibigay ko ang search warrant o hindi. So, yan ang ginawa ng clerk of court. In-interview niya yung uh, agents ng uh, Bureau of Internal uh, Revenue. So, after conducting the uh, interview, nandyan na si judge. Sabi ni judge, mukhang may sapat na basihan for me to issue the search warrant. So, in-issue niya ang search warrant. So, the question now in this case is, naaayon ba sa batas yung ginawa ni judge? To tell you, no. Kasi ano ang diniscuss natin kanina? Ito, oh. the probable cause must be determined personally by the judge. At yung judge ang mag-examine sa mga complainant at mga witnesses. Hindi niya pwedeng i-delegate yan. Hindi niya pwedeng ipasa yan sa ibang tao. No? So, comes now the uh, <clears throat> case of uh, uh, people of the Philippines versus uh, uh, Court of Appeals. So, <clears throat> ito naman yung uh, <clears throat> in relation to place. Okay, balikan natin ah, yung uh, requisites ng search warrant. Pang. Particularly describing the things in place to be searched. Dapat nakalagay sa search warrant kung ano ang specific na address o kung ano ang specific na bahay na is a search. Okay. What happened in this case, in the case of uh, people of the Philippines versus Court of Appeals is may isang polisman. <laughs> Pumunta siya kay judge. Sabi niya, uh, this happened at Quezon City. Uh, sabi niya, uh, judge, uh, pwedeng mag-issue ka ng search warrant at uh, isearch namin ang uh, isang house known as Abigail Store. Okay? House known as Abigail uh, Store. Kasi may mga uh, firearms doon at explosives in the Abigail store. So sabi ni judge, okay, sige, ito na ang search warrant. I-search ninyo ang Abigail uh, store that is located at uh, uh, San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. So when the policeman went, nung pumunta sila sa place, uh, ibang kanilang na-search, no? So, ang kung Abigail store ito, yung nasa harap niya na bahay that is known as apartment number one, yan ang kanilang na-search. Di ko lang alam kung saan nagkamali. Di, ba? Di ko lang alam kung saan nagkamali. Baka yung information na pumunta sa uh, polisman ang nagkamali na imbes na apartment number one ang kanilang i-search, ang kanyang linagay ay Abigail store. Na magkatabi lang naman na bahay. Magkatabi lang naman. So, After uh, conducting the search, totoo na dyan yung illegal firearms. So, ang question na ngayon ay, valid ba yung search warrant? Ang nakalagay ay Abigail Store, ang kanilang isearch. Tapos, ang actual na kanilang na-search ay apartment number one na nasa tabi o harap lang ng Abigail Store. So, uh, Perhaps ang palusot ng polisman ay nagkamali lang ako ng akala. Okay? Akala ko ay uh, Abigail Historion only to find out dapat ang linagay ko ay apartment number one. Okay? So valid ba yung search warrant? According to the Supreme Court, no. It is not valid. No? So, uh, it, so because it is not valid, It uh, follows that uh, the illegal articles cannot be used against the accused. So sabi ng at, uh, sa ating Supreme Court, dapat kung ano ang actual na isa search, yan ang nakalagay sa search warrant. Hindi yung iba ang nakalagay sa search warrant sa actual na na-search. No? Perhaps kung may mali, ang gagawin ng polisman ay balik kay judge at palitan yung address kung sakaling nagkamaliman. No? <clears throat> so let's go to the case of uh, 
Republic versus Sandigan Bayan. How can we explain it? Balikan na naman natin, no? Yung requisites of valid search warrant. Nakalagay doon na particularly describing the things to be searched. Okay. Ano bang nangyari dito sa uh, Republic versus Sandigan Bayan? Yung policeman, <clears throat> nag-apply sila ng search warrant. At ang title ng search warrant ay for illegal possession of firearms and ammunitions. So, uh, pumunta sila sa kanilang search. Totoo, nandiyan yung illegal firearms and ammunitions. But, may nakita silang cash. Malaking cash ang nakita nila doon. Jewelries and land titles. The cash is amounting to more than uh, 2 million pesos. Tapos, and and uh, more than uh, 50,000 US dollars. So, talagang malaking amount ito. Considering that this case way back, that this case is uh, way back 1986. Talagang malaking amount ito. So, ang ginawa ng policeman, of course, kinuha nila yung illegal, uh, ay, yung firearms and explosives. D pero dinamay nila yung cash. Kinuha nila yung cash. Kinuha nila yung jewelries. Kinuha nila yung land titles. Kinanfiscate nila ang mga yun. So, is the con ang pinaka-issue dito ay, is the confiscation of the cash, jewelry, and land titles in accordance with law, is it proper to tell you no? Walang basihan ang reading team o walang legal basis ang reading team na i-confiscate ang cash, jewelries, and land titles. Ayon. In the first place, they are not illegal per se. Okay, baka ang tanong nyo sa akin ay, paano kung ang nakita nila doon ay hindi cash, illegal drugs ang nakita nila doon? But ang caption ng kanilang search warrant ay in search of firearms and ammunitions. Pero ang nakita nila, illegal drugs. Pwede ba nilang i-confiscate yung illegal drugs at uh, idagdag sa kaso ng taong yon? To tell you, yes. Because illegal drugs are illegal per se. But cash, jewelries, and land titles are not illegal per se. No? So, <clears throat> what are the subjects of the offense? Ay, what are the subjects of uh, search warrant? No? So, ang search warrant daw natin ay uh, i-issue yan okay, for the search and seizure of the following personal property. So, we have the subject of the offense, the stolen, yung mga ninakaw, uh, o yung mga uh, gamit that are used or intended to be used in committing a crime, sila ang subjects ng search warrant. <clears throat> Let's go to arrest. <clears throat> so arrest is the taking of a person into custody in order that he may be bound to answer for the commission of an offense. This is arrest. So the requisites of a valid, uh, uy, may mali dito. <laughs> the requisites of a valid warrant of arrest, dapat ito, no? I'm very sorry about it. The requisites of a valid warrant of arrest are the following. First, it must be issued upon probable cause. So they are the same with search warrant. It only happened that um, in the third requisite, it must be particularly describing the person to be arrested as again search warrant, which is particularly describing the things and place to be searched. So I repeat, uh, I'm very sorry in this uh, PowerPoint presentation, dapat ang nakalagay dyan ay requisites of valid warrant of arrest. No? <clears throat> so, katulad ng search warrant, for an arrest to be valid, there must be a warrant to do so. Otherwise, it is unreasonable. Hindi siya naaayon sa saligang batas o hindi siya naaayon sa batas kung walang warrant to do so. Pero katulad din ng search, meron siyang exemption. At ang exemption ay tatlo. Ito ay tinatawag natin na the instances of warrantless arrest. 
So with respect to the extensive discussion of these instances of uh, warrantless arrest, uh, it will be discussed in your subject fundamentals of criminal investigation. So <clears throat> let's go to the case of uh, Harvey versus Miriam Defensor, Santiago. So what happened in this case? <clears throat> there were um, two uh, American citizens who went to Pagsanhan Laguna and they resided therein for quite some time. But uh, my chismis na pumasok sa head ng uh, uh, sa head ng Commission on Immigration and Deportation by the name of uh, Miriam Defensor Santiago kasi bago naging uh, politician si Miriam Defensor Santiago siya ay naging uh, head ng uh, com uh, Commission on Immigration and uh, Deportation. Nalaman niya na ni Miriam Defensor Santiago na yung dalawang Americans na yon, ang kanilang pangalan ay uh, Harvey at uh, Sherman, ay involved sa uh, pedophile, pedophilia. Ibig sabihin ay mahilig sila sa uh, bata. And they are gays. No? And they are gays. Kaya ang ginawa ni Miriam Defensor Santiago, pinasurveillance niya ang dalawa na yon. Nung binigay ang report ng uh, uh, operation report, ng uh, surveillance team kay uh, at uh, after mission report kay uh, Miriam Defensor Santiago nalaman niya na si Mr. Harvey ay uh, yon may mga pictures na they are with boys and the boys are naked at sila ay nasa isang room so there are several pictures na nagpapakita na they are having sex with those boys. So in response to the uh, information na nalaman ni Miriam Defensor Santiago, pinahuli niya ang dalawa na yun. No? Pinahuli niya si na uh, Harvey at uh, Sherman. So ang depensa ni na Harvey at uh, Sherman ay look in the law in relation to conducting arrest. Sino ba ang nag issue ng warrant of arrest? Si judge. Eh bakit ikaw, Commissioner on Immigration and Deportation, bakit ka nag issue ng order of arrest? Samantalang si judge lang dapat ang nagbibigay ng warrant of arrest. No? So, tama ba si na Harvey? To tell you, Malay, no? under the special law known as Commonwealth uh, Act 613, that is the uh, Philippine Immigration Act of 1940, yung head ng Commission on Immigration and Deportation ay may kapangyarihan siya na mag-issue ng warrant of arrest. Okay? So, in other words, hindi lang judge ang nag issue ng warrant of arrest. Pati ang commissioner ng immigration and deportation in order to arrest unwanted alien. <clears throat> in that case, in this case of uh, Harvey versus uh, Defensor Santiago, napakadami naging issue dito. No? The issue in the with respect to warrant of arrest is only one of them. Kasi uh, ang ginawa ni Miriam Defensor Santiago is kinulong niya ang dalawa. They applied for bail. Sabi ng uh, uh, ay, uh, sabi ni na Harvey at uh, Sherman, eh dapat palayain mo kami because we are paying for our bail. Sabi ni Miriam Defensor Santiago, hindi ito criminal case. You are not undergoing criminal case or in you will be entitled to bail. You are undergoing a deportation proceeding. Kaya hindi kayo pwedeng palayain by means of bail. Ano ang sabi ng Supreme Court? Tama, si Miriam Defensor Santiago. The right to bail is applicable only to persons who were charged with criminal case. But it is not applicable 
to persons who are undergoing deportation proceedings. <clears throat> Let's go to John the Warren. So, uh, uh, you will be discussing this more in relation, uh, if you will be having your subject uh, fundamentals of criminal investigation. So, we will now be going to the distinctions between uh, warrant of arrest and search warrant. Okay? Kung ano ang pagkakaiba ng warrant of arrest and search warrant. To tell you, napakadami. First, the warrant of arrest, and uh, let's go to similarity. The warrant of arrest and search warrant are uh, orders in writing issued in the name of the people of the Philippines. And of course, signed by the judge and directed to a peace officer. And second, the warrant of arrest and uh, search warrant are issued only upon probable cause. And as I told you a while back, the probable cause must be determined personally by the judge after examination under oath or affirmation of the complainant and the witnesses he may produce. Kaya na nga nung pinuntahan natin yung kaso ni Bache versus Ruiz, hindi pwedeng ipasa ni judge sa kanyang clerk yung pag-conduct ng examination. Let's go to the distinction. The warrant of arrest is intended to arrest person, but the search warrant is intended to search and seize things specified therein. So the fourth is, this is with respect to the days of validity. The warrant of arrest is valid as long as a person indicated therein was not arrested, regardless of the number of days that, that already lapsed. Wala tayong pakialam kung ilang days ang naglapse. As long as a person indicated therein were not arrested, then the warrant of arrest remains valid. But in search warrant, that is the search warrant is valid only within 10 days from issue. So, the fifth distinction in relation to possession. While conducting arrest by virtue of warrant of arrest, the policeman need not be in possession of the search warrant. Hindi kailangan na hawak-hawak ng policeman ang warrant of arrest. Okay, ang warrant of arrest na yun. But in conducting search, kailangan na hawak-hawak ng mga policeman yung search warrant before conducting the search. And seven. The warrant of arrest may be executed any time of the day and night. Ibig sabihin ay uh, kung huhuliin ng isang tao by virtue of warrant of arrest, any time, pwedeng huliin yun. But uh, in conducting search by virtue of search warrant, as much as possible, it must be done in daytime. Okay, let's go now to section 3. Article 3 of uh, the 1987 Constitution that uh, speaks to the right of privacy. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> the general rule is the privacy of communication and correspondence shall be inviolable. Ibig sabihin, uh, we have the right to a private life. Yung communication natin dapat ay... Uh, Pri uh, dapat ay may privacy din yun, no? So, but the exemptions are first, if there is a lawful order of the court or when public safety or order requires otherwise. Ano bang tinatawag natin na right of privacy? So, the right of privacy is our right to be left alone. Hindi makikilam ang ibang tao sa atin. So, even our communications, it includes our communications, our personal uh, uh, circumstances, ang personal na kaligayahan natin, we have the right to be alone. At hindi makikialam ang ibang tao dyan. No? So, let's go to the case of um, <clears throat> Zulueta versus uh, uh, Court of Appeals. So, um, ang inaalala ko lang, baka yung mga kabataan na yun, they cannot relate in this case, no? They cannot relate in this case. Alam nyo kasi nung, uh, 
1990s and early uh, 2000. <clears throat> Kung sakaling nagliligawan ang dalawang tao, it is not by means of text message. Hindi katulad ngayon. It is by it is by virtue of greeting cards, love letters, na talagang sulat kamay. Okay? Sinusulat kamay yun. There was a medical doctor by the name of Alfredo Martin <clears throat> na yun, baka may girlfriend siya maliban sa kanyang asawa. Meron siyang misis by the name of Cecilia Zelueta. So, um, uh, nalaman ng kanyang misis na may kabit ang kanyang mister kaya pumunta siya sa office ng kanyang mister pilit na binuksan yung isang cabinet at nakuha niya yung ebidensya ng uh, pangangaliwa ng kanyang mister at anong ebidensya yon ngayon kasi ang ebidensya kunin mo lang ang cellphone nandiyan yan eh no but noon is ang, ang nakuha niyang ebidensya ay yung mga love letters greeting cards and others sa kanyang mga kabit. So, kinuha niya yon, tapos nag-file siya ng petition ng legal legal separation na sila'y maghiwalay at gusto niyang ipa-disqualify ang kanyang mister sa practice of medicine dahil sa kanyang pagkakabit. Ay sa kanyang uh, <laughs> dahil sa kanyang pangangaliwa. No? So, uh, it was question by uh, Martin, sabi niya ng kanyang mister, ah, hindi mo pwedeng gawin yan, hindi ka pwedeng pumunta sa aking, uh, uh, hindi ka pwedeng uh, pumunta sa aking office, uh, tapos pilit na buksan ang mga cabinet sa aking office, tapos kung anong nakuha mo ay gagamitin mo laman sa atin, hindi pwede yan. Because I have the right of privacy. So, tama ba si Martin? To tell you, sabi ng Supreme Court, yes. Tama si Martin. So, kahit na kung asam, asawa mo yan, you must still respect his right of privacy. Hindi pwedeng kunin mo ang gusto mong kunin sa kanya at pakialaman mo. No? So, uh, <clears throat> next is, uh, in the case of uh, Ramirez versus Court of Appeals, ito naman, May dalawang babae who had uh, a uh, heated confrontation. Yung isang babae, re-record niya yung, yung uh, confrontation. Tapos sabi niya, okay, na record ko ang uh, uh, confrontation na natin, gagamitin ko na ito laban sa'yo. So, ang ginawa ng isang babae is, question niya, sabi niya, hindi mo pwedeng gamitin laban sa akin yan because it is in violation of uh, uh, Republic Act 4200. The Republic Act 4200 is the act to prohibit and penalize wiretapping and other related violations. So it is a anti-wiretapping law. So sabi naman ng nag-record, ah, hindi ah, uh, Valid ang pag-record ko kasi uh, member naman ako ng communication. Pwedeng i-claim lang ang violation of wiretapping law kung ang nag-record ay third party. Kung tayo ang nag-heated confrontation tapos may isang tao na nag-record. Yan ang applicability ng anti-wiretapping law. Tama ba yun? So, sabi ng Supreme Court, mali yun. Yung violation ng anti-war tapping law, it may be committed not only by the third person, but it may also be committed by any of the parties to that communication. <clears throat> Let's go to section 4. And, uh, ay nako, ito ang isa sa pinaka uh, <clears throat> controversial, no? Na provision ng ating constitution. This is uh, uh, section 4, which uh, provides for our right of speech, expression, press, and of assembly. No? 
So it is a little bit complicated, really. Kaya na, uh, I ask you to memorize for it because this is really very important, but very complicated. The problem here is my opinion may not be the same with the opinion of others. No? So to play safe, ang gawin ko na lang is I will not be giving my opinion. <laughs> Kung ano ang decision ng Supreme Court, yun na yun, ano? Na hindi na wala ng opinion yun. <clears throat> so, um, there are rights stated under Section 4 of the Bill of Rights. And uh, they are the following. First is the freedom of speech. <clears throat> Second is the um, freedom of expression. The third is the freedom of the press and the freedom of assembly. So, <clears throat> punta tayo sa isang complicated na issue. No? Paano kung mag-conflict ang dalawang constitutional rights? Yung right of privacy and freedom of expression, which will prevail? Diba? Ito na nga ang problema natin sa pag-discuss ng constitution. Eh. There are two constitutional uh, uh, provisions and they collide with each other, which will prevail. No? This is a, a complicated situation because the answer, it depends. Paano siya naging it depends? No? We will be discussing two cases in relation to this. No? Kaya kung kayo ay tanungin, if the right of privacy will collide or will contradict with the freedom of expression, which will prevail? To tell you, it depends. Consider the first case, <clears throat> Lagunsad versus Gonzalez. May isang tao by the name of uh, Moises Padilla, uh, who was a, uh, <clears throat> a candidate for a mayor at uh, Negros Occidental. But uh, unluckily, uh, pinatay siya during the uh, election. But uh, after his uh, death, may nagka-interest sa kanyang buhay na isang uh, movie producer. Sabi ng isang movie producer, uh, tinanong niya ang mother ni uh, Moises Padilla. Ang tanong niya ay, uh, pwede ko bang... Uh, Pwede ba namin gawan ng pelikula ang buhay ng inyong anak? So sabi ng uh, uh, mother ni Moises Padilla, Okay, ano naman ang maging title? So sabi ng movie producer, ang kanyang title ay The Moises Padilla Story. So I repeat that, The Moises Padilla Story. So medyo masaya ang kanyang mother kasi may lalagay sa pelikula ang, kanyang, ang uh, buhay ng kanyang anak. So sabi ng kanyang mother, uh, that is with a, uh, ano, meron tayong, uh, uh, ang kasunduan natin ay dapat, bago nyo i-release, ay ako ang first na manunood doon. So, in the, natapos na yung, yung uh, pelikula. So, when it was, uh, nung pinanood sa mother ni Moises, medyo masaya naman siya nung umpisa. Kasi nandyan ang ginagawa ng kanyang anak. Pero nung nasa dulo na, ayun. Pinapakita niya na meron daw kabit, meron daw babae, si Moises Padilla. At alam niyo na kung ano ang ginagawa ng lalaki at babae kung sila ay magkasama sa isang kwarto. Di ba? Sabi nga nila, eh, alangan na they are going to talk about the weather. No? Or alangan naman na they are going to pray the rosary. So, sabi ng mother ni uh, Moises uh, Padilla, Oy, teka lang, teka lang. Uh, ikaw, MML uh, Productions, na gumawa ng Moises Padilla Story, tanggalin nyo yan. Yung, uh, uh, yung uh, relationship ng aking anak sa mga babae na yan at kung anong ginagawa nila, tanggalin ninyo. Sabi ng uh, <clears throat> MML Productions, yung gumawa ng pelikula, eh kung tatanggalin namin yan, wala ng thrill no? ang pelikula. Wala nang thrill. Kasi yan ang hinahanap ng ibang lalaki, yung thrill ng pelikula. Sabi ng mother ni uh, Moises Padilla, kailangan na respetuhin niyo ang right of privacy ng aking anak. 
sabi naman ng MML Productions, eh paano naman ang aming freedom of expression? Alam naman natin lahat na yan ang ginagawa nila. No? So, dalawang rights ang nagbanggahan. Okay? Which will prevail? Okay? Sabi ng Supreme Court sa kaso na ito, as between the right of privacy invoked by the mother and the freedom of expression invoked by the movie producer, that is the MML Productions, the state shall balance their respective interests. Since the movie producer is primarily for profit only, income lang ang kanyang habol, kailangan na respetuhin natin ang right of privacy ni Moises Padilla. Tanggalin yung mga uh, uh, portion na kasama niya ang mga, ang mga babae niya. No? So the right of privacy shall prevail against the uh, freedom of expression. What case? Lagunsad versus Gonzales. Punta tayo sa AR Productions. <clears throat> the AR Productions, this happened after the Itzaman Revolution. Way back 1986. Uh, sa Itzaman Revolution, uh, yun, uh, pinatal si Marcos. At ang may dalawang pinaka-participation para mapatalsik si Marcos ay si uh, General Ramos, Fidel Valdez Ramos at si uh, Secretary uh, uh, Juan Ponce in relay. Sila ang dalawa na may pinaka-participation um, doon. So, after the X1 Revolution, <clears throat> may isang uh, movie producer known as uh, AR Productions na nagka-interest sa Edsawan Revolution. So, sabi ng AR Productions, paano kung ilagay natin sa pelikula yan? No? Yung Edsawan Revolution. So, sabi ng uh, MTRCB, the uh, <clears throat> Movie Television uh, Review and Classification Board, okay lang naman yan na ilagay nyo yan sa pelikula. Provided, kailangan na kunin ninyo ang uh, support ng uh, tatlo na katao. First, General Ramos. Second is uh, Inrili, Juan Ponce Inrili. And third is the current president during the time, Corazon Po Juanco Aquino. So, <clears throat> yung AR Productions, pumunta sila sa kay uh, Cory Aquino. Okay, kay Cory Aquino. Pumunta sila kay uh, General Ramos. Okay din kay General Ramos. Nung pumunta sila kay Juan Paul Sinrile, sabi ni Juan Paul Sinrile, Nako, ayaw ko dyan. Huwag na huwag din yung ilalagay sa pelikula ang It's a One Revolution na yan. Kung ilalagay nyo sa pelikula ang It's a One Revolution, tanggalin nyo ang aking participation. Respect my right of privacy. Sabi naman ng AR Productions, how about our right of expression? Okay? So, nagbanggahan na naman yung, yung dalawang rights na yun, no? Yung uh, right of the freedom of expression and the right of privacy. So, sabi ng Supreme Court, uh, in this case, hindi pwedeng i-claim ni Juan Ponce in really ang kanyang right of privacy. Why? Dahil siya ay public figure. Kung ang isang tao ay public figure, wala na siyang right of privacy. No? So that is a lesson to all. No? Kung ang isang tao ay public figure, wala siyang right of privacy. Kasi totoo yung sabi ng AR Productions na kung tanggalin nila ang participation ni Juan Ponsin Rile, di as if binabago nila ang kasaysayan ng Pilipinas. Okay? So, hindi pwede yun, sabi ng Supreme Court. So, um, uh, that's it. Uh, <clears throat> but by the way, my joke, uh, di ko alam kung totoo o joke lang ito, no? Na, uh, o chismis lang ito. Kasi tinanong daw ng Supreme Court, ikaw naman, Juan Ponce in really? Bakit ayaw mo mailagay sa pelikula ang uh, inyong buhay? Di ba? Lahat naman ng mga tao gusto nilang gusto nilang may ilagay sa pelikula ang kanilang buhay. 
Ang sabi daw ni Juan Ponsin really ay, hindi naman talaga sa ayaw ko. Ang nangyari lang doon, eh, yung kinuha nilang aktor na mag-act daw na Juan Ponsin really ay kapangit naman, dapat palitan nila ng pogi. No? Kaya sabi ng Supreme Court, ay nako, ikaw naman in your productions, dapat maghanap ka kasi ng guwapo at siyang mag-act na Juan Ponsi in really. No? So yun, pumayag na si Juan Ponsi in really. So, um, inulit ko ah, kailan mag-prevail ang right of privacy against the freedom of expression kung ang habol lang ng movie producer ay income at hindi public figure ang uh, <clears throat> gagawan ng movie. But pa, kailan ba mag-prevail ang uh, right of expression against the uh, uh, <clears throat> right of expression against the uh, right of privacy kung ang ilalagay sa movie ay buhay ng isang public figure. So, move on na tayo. <clears throat> Let's go to Elizalde versus uh, Gutierrez. What happened in this case? <clears throat> There was a uh, <clears throat> Uh, newspaper known as uh, the evening uh, news so um uh, ang evening news na ito ay uh, <clears throat> re-report uh, yung mga bata yung mga kabataan yan ay baka hindi pwedeng makarelate no noon kasi noong 1960s there was may sikat na uh, magi de la reva rape case at ang nag-grade sa isang sikat na actress ay mga anak ng mayayaman. No? By the name of uh, uh, Jaime Jose and others. So, uh, <clears throat> yun. Nai-report sa news na yan kung ano, ang, uh, uh, kung ano ang nalaman nila in relation sa kaso ng uh, nina Jaime Jose and others. And it includes yung Magi de la Reva rape case. So, nung lumabas sa news ang uh, yun nga, yung involving uh, Jaime, Jaime Jose and others, yung news, uh, yung evening news na yon yung owner, kinasuhan nina Jaime Jose ng libel kasi sabi nila, live bilos ang prenisent nilang news. Sabi naman ng news, uh, ng news na yan, hindi live bilos. So yun, nagbabanggahan ng opinion. Sabi ni uh, Jose, uh, ni Jaime Jose, live bilos yan. Kaya kakasuhan kita ng live bilos. Sabi naman ng evening news, hindi ito live bilos. Okay, so ang issue ngayon ay, kailan ba natin masasabi na libelous at actionable ang ginawa ng isang media man at kailan natin masasabi na hindi actionable? Okay? So, ito ang criteria. So, for it to be not actionable, ibig sabihin, for it not to be libelous, dapat ang ilalabas sa uh, uh, news ay kung ano ang totoo, fair report ng actual proceeding. Next is dapat, yung mga reporters, they must be acting in good faith. And last, hindi pwedeng magbigay ng comment at opinion ang mga writers or uh, reporters. No? Kaya kung sasabihin ng reporters na si na Jaime Jose ay na-convict, Libelous ba yan? Hindi libelous kasi totoo yun. Pero paano kung sasabihin ng writer o uh, <clears throat> reporter na sa tingin ko makukonvict ang mga ito? Ay nako, opinion na yan. That is already a personal comment. So it can be considered as libelous already. So in this case, the enumerated requisites are present. So the publisher of the evening news cannot be held liable for the crime of libel. Let's go to 
the case of uh, PETA versus Court of uh, Appeals. So, <clears throat> uy. Ay, oh, pala. <clears throat> uh, naalala ko na ito. In relation to the case of PETA, <clears throat> there was a mayor, okay, uh, <clears throat> alam nyo yung uh, tinatawag natin na Playboy Magazine, no? Diba? Yung Playboy Magazine ay nandyan yung mga pictures ng, uh, uh, may mga pictures na nakahubad, gano'n. And, uh, uh, linalagay niya sa magazine na yun. So, nag-recreate nag na siya ng different opinions. So, sabi ni Mayor, uh, obscene yan, malaswa yan. Kaya dapat, i-confiscate natin, sirain natin. So, yan ang ginawa ni Mayor. No? Pinagka-confiscate niya yung mga Playboy magazines dahil sa tingin niya ay malaswa, tapos sinisira niya mga yun. Okay? So, pwede ba yun? So, uh, according to the uh, Supreme Court, uh, mukhang may mali. Kasi kung obscene yan o hindi obscene, kung malaswa yan o hindi malaswa, hindi dapat si mayor ang mag-determine yan. Dapat ang courts ang mag-determine yan. No? At kung ikakonfiscate yan, eh dapat by virtue of the order of the court, no? hindi yung order ni mayor. So, ang uh, natutunan natin dito is uh, when can we consider that a magazine is malaswa, obscene? It must be in accordance with the opinion of the court and not in opinion of the mayor. <clears throat> so, let's go to <clears throat> uh, the case of uh, Sur Soriano versus uh, La Guardia. No? Soriano versus La Guardia. In 2004, <clears throat> uh, ang religion kasi na ang dating daan, meron silang, uh, uh, anong tawag dito? Uh, they have their own uh, TV network. No? And that is on TV uh, 37. So I repeat, they have their own TV network. At alam natin lahat na ang TV networks ay uh, kontrolado yan ng MTRCB. No? Ang host ng uh, TV network is si uh, Eliseo Soriano. No? Siya ang uh, isa sa head ng ang dating daan. Okay, ito ang kanyang sakto na sinabi in one of the program ng uh, ang TV uh, 37 network ng uh, ang dating daan. Sabi ni Eliseo, uh, ni Eliseo Soriano, Lihitimong anak ng demonyo, sinungaling, gago ka talaga Michael, so on and so forth. Tapos ang isa sa kanya pang sinabi ay, sobrang kasinungalingan ang demonyong ito. So napakadami siyang akusasyon. At ang kanyang pinatatamaan, ay si Michael Sandoval na ministro ng iglesia. So, ganyan kasi sa atin eh. Di ba? Nagbabanggahan ang mga religion natin. So, nung feeling ni, feeling ni Michael Sandoval na minister ng iglesia, siya ang pinatatamaan ni Eliseo Soriano. Okay? Kaya nag-file na siya ng complaint laban sa MTRCB. So pinanood ng MTRCB at yun nga. Okay? Ang sina ang uh, sinasabi ni uh, uh, Eliseo Soriano. So sabi ng sabi ng MTR sabi uh, MTRCB uh, ikaw ang TV network ng uh, ang dating daan. You will be suspended for three months dahil sa ginawa ninyo. Sabi naman ng uh, sabi naman ng uh, ang dating daan, how about our right of ex expression or of speech? Huh? But tama ba ang pag-suspend ng MTRCB to tell you yes? Huh? The MTRCB may suspend for three months the airing of the program of ang dating daan as a punishment dahil sa kanyang sinabi. 
So it is a valid prior restraint measure on the part of the MTRCB. Ano ba itong tinatawag nila na prior restraint? The prior restraint is any scheme which gives the government officials the power to deny the person of his right of expression. So I repeat, itong prior restraint ay ito yung karapatan ng ating government na i-deny o hindi ibigay sa isang tao ang kanyang right of expression. Perhaps dahil ang tao na yan ay sinobrahan niya ang kanyang right of expression at meron nang nasasaktan. No? So let's go to the freedom of press and speech. So ang sikat na kaso dito is in the case of Pablito Sanidad versus Kamelec. Okay, so I repeat that. This is in the case of Pablito Sanidad versus Kamelec. So this is a Baguio case. Uh, way back 1980s, <clears throat> ang uh, Cordillera Administrative Region ay magkakandak ng plebisito. Uh, alamin ng mag-de-decide uh, ang taga Cordillera kung maging autonomous sila o hindi. Kaya kung ang boto nila ay yes, gusto nila sa autonomy. Pero kung no, ay ayaw nila sa autonomy. So, uh, nung malapit na ang plebisito, <clears throat> Biglang nag-issue ang Kamelec ng resolution. Sabi ng Kamelec, ito na ang resolution uh, ng Kamelec na bawal magbigay ng comment. Yung mga, kayong mga columnists, commentators, announcers o yung involved sa media, hindi kayo pwedeng magbigay ng comment in relation sa plebisito na yan. So, Si Pablito Sanidad kasi ay isang kalamis. Siya isang manunulat. So, na, uh, siya ay manunulat ng Baguio Midland Courier. Ang Baguio Midland Courier ay yan ay weekly uh, newspaper sa Baguio. Sabi ng uh, uh, ay sabi ni Pablito Sanidad, if you are going to prohibit us in expressing our opinion, nasaan na ngayon ang aming Freedom of press and speech. Sabi naman ng Kamelec, ay huwag kayong mag-alala kasi may tinatawag tayo na Kamelec Space and Kamelec Time. Ano ang Kamelec Space? Kami mismo ang mag-rent sa uh, space ng newspaper at dyan, dyan yung isulat ang inyong comment. Sa Kamelec Time naman, mag-rent kami ng time ng mga radios at yung specific time sa radios na yon, Diyan sa sasabihin ang inyong comment. No? So, is still mukhang may mali kasi mukhang kinokontrol ng Kamelec ang right of the press and speech ng mga manunulat. So, tama bang gawin ng Kamelec yon? To tell you, no. The Kamelec may not validly prohibit columnists, radio announcers, and TV commentators for commenting uh, for for or against the issue in the plebiscite in the Cordillera Administrative Region. <clears throat> so, let's go to the case of involving Midland Courier na naman, no? Baguio Midland Courier uh, and uh, Cecil Afable versus uh, Court of Appeals and Ramon Labo Jr. Tulad ng sabi ko sa inyo kanina, Ang Baguio Midland Courier ay isang newsletter. Newsletter ito that is circulating around the uh, around Baguio and nearby provinces. No? So uh, <clears throat> there was a si Labo naman ay isang politician. Noong 1984, si Labo ay tumakbong congressman ng Baguio City. So, uh, kumuha siya ng uh, nag-rent siya in several occasions in order to uh, in order to uh, enhance ang kanyang uh, ang, ang kanyang strategy sa pangangampanya ay uh, kinontak niya ang Midland Courier. 
So sabi ni Labo, pwedeng, pwedeng ilagay niyo ang aking campaign ads dyan sa Midland Courier at magbabayad ako. Ang naging problema doon, after the election, hindi ko alam kung nanalo o natalo si Labo, hindi siya nagbayad. Okay? At naipon na 27,000 plus ang kailangan ng isettle niya sa Midland Courier. O hindi siya nagbayad. That was 1984. Noong 1988, tumakbo si Labo na mayor ng Baguio City. No? So I repeat, ha? 1984, tumakbo siyang congressman, uh, nagpa-advertise siya sa Midland Courier na newsletter, hindi siya nagbayad. Noong 1988, tumakbo siyang mayor. And perhaps, ang isa sa kanyang promise ay, kung mananalo ako mayor, mag-donate ako ng 18 million pesos sa Baguio. Okay? Kasi mayaman naman si Ramon Labo na businessman. Mag-donate ako ng 18 million pesos sa Baguio. Ayun na. Si Cecil Afable ay manunulat sa Midland Courier. Sabi niya, ano ba naman ang Labo na to? Can he read and write? Sabi niya na ganun. Totoo ba na magdodonate siya ng 18 million sa Baguio, sa Baguio City? Kung ang kanyang utang sa Midland Courier na more than 27,000 pesos lang ay ayaw niyang isettle. So, uh, yung comment ni Cecil Afable, dinagay niya sa Midland Courier, yun, nag-distribute na yan sa uh, Baguio. So, Kinasuhan ni Jun Labo ang Midland Courier at si Cecil Afable ng libel. Sabi ni Ramon Labo, ano ba naman kayo? Bakit niyo sinabi na hindi ako nagbabayad ng aking utang? Which is totoo naman. Ba? Dahil dyan, kakasuhan ko kayo ng libel. <clears throat> so, ang palusot ng Midland Courier at si Cecil Afable ay, Ikaw, Jun Labo, Di mo ba alam ang kasabihan na ang public officers ay hindi dapat union skin sa criticism? Oo, totoo. That is a policy. Ang mga politicians natin, hindi sila dapat union skin, hindi dapat manipis ang kanilang balat pagdating sa criticism. Pwede nating i-criticize ang mga public officers natin. Ang sabi naman ni Ramon Labo, hindi naman ako public officer. Pero tumatakbo ako bilang public officer. Okay? Kaya ang issue na ngayon ay when we say public officers must not be too skin with uh, reference to comments and criticism. Does it include yung hindi pa public officer but they are running for public office? O ano sabi ng Supreme Court? Yes. No? Kaya kahit na kung hindi ka public officer, kung ikaw ay tatakbo na maging public officer, hindi ka dapat in onion skin sa criticism. No? <clears throat> kung may mag-comment laban sa'yo, baliwalay mo lang yan because it is a part of your job as a public officer. <clears throat> Let's go to the case of New Sounds Broadcasting Network Incorporated versus Honorable Cesar D. et al. and others. No? Ito naman sa uh, City of Kawayan, Isabela. <clears throat> uh, may, bumburi, may Bumburidyo stations sa Kawayan, Isabela. <clears throat> so nag-operate sila doon. So, hindi maiwasan na yung uh, bumburadyo ay kung minsan binabanatan niya si D. Si D ay politician ng Isabela. So, during the time <clears throat> na mag-renew ng business permit ang bumburadyo, sabi ni D, ay nako, hindi na pwedeng i-renew ang inyong permit, bumburadyo. Dahil ang lupa kung saan uh, 
uh, kung saan na construct ang bomburadyo ay agricultural land hindi siya commercial land kaya hindi pwedeng i-renew ang inyong permit so pwede ba yon pwede bang basta-basta sabihin ng politician na oy ikaw bomburadyo hindi pwedeng i-renew ang inyong permit dahil may mali sa inyong lupa uh, hindi siya commercial uh, it is uh, uh, agricultural at hindi siya commercial lot no sabi ng Supreme Court, the closure of Bumburadyo stations was not valid. Hindi na ayon sa batas yan. It is constituted that prior restraint in violation of the right of the press of the Bumburadyo, hence the uh, city of Kawayan must pay for damages dahil sa losses ng Bumburadyo as a result of the illegal closure. Kasi common sense naman, kung sakaling nag-operate ang bumburadyo dyan na agricultural land ang kanilang, build, uh, na ang kanilang building ay nasa agricultural land eh bakit sila nag-operate in the first place? Di ba? Dapat noon pa na hindi pinayagan yan no? Bakit sila sinara noong uh, <clears throat> uh, anong tawag dito? Uh, bakit sinara ang bumburadyo noong ito na ay uh, kumakalaban sa politicians, no? Let's go to freedom of assembly. So, in freedom of assembly, <clears throat> paano ba ang pag-apply ng permit to conduct rally? So, they there is a, a step per step procedure that may be considered in application of permit. So, First is, of course, application for permit. For permit. So uh, the applicants for permit to hold uh, an assembly should inform the uh, licensing authority of the date, the uh, place where the uh, rally will be conducted. However, no permit shall be required if the public assembly is done in private place. Kaya kung private place naman, there is no need to have uh, a permit or in the Freedom Park. When we say Freedom Park, it is uh, under the law, there must be, the municipality or city must designate a Freedom Park for any person to conduct rally there in any time. Dito sa city of Tarlac is we have the Plazuela, okay? that is our Freedom Park, where in rally can be conducted any time. So, uh, next is campus of a government-owned or and operated educational institution. No, pwedeng magkandak ng uh, uh, rally don, and uh, there is no need to uh, uh, get a permit. Kaya sinasamantala nila sa UP palaging may uh, rally, no, because it is a campus uh, which is uh, governmentally owned and operated educational institution so what is the pwede bang sabihin ng uh, ng issuing authority na ayaw namin ibigay ang permit hindi lang pwedeng sabihin yon. maliban if there is a clear and present danger ibig sabihin napakalinaw na there is an expected danger if the rally will be conducted <clears throat> And uh, the mayor or any uh, official acting on the behalf shall act on the application within two working days. Kaya kung nag-apply sila ng permit, dapat na uh, magbigay ng decision si mayor ng, uh, within two working days. Kung hindi siya nag-decide within two working days, automatic the permit is deemed granted. As I told you a while back, every city and municipality in the country shall establish or designate a freedom park. So, in this freedom park must be located in the population where demonstrators and meetings may be held anytime without the need of a permit. So, um, 
Let's go to the case of uh, Bayan, Karapatan, Kilusang Mabukid ng Pilipinas uh, and others versus Eduardo Ermita. So, what happened in this case? <clears throat> May nagkandak ng rally. Okay? Eh, title pa lang ay yung nagkakandak, nagkakandak ng rally ang mga ito. No? So, um, <clears throat> Biglang pinatigil at dinisperse ni uh, Executive Secretary Eduardo Ormita. Sabi niya, bawal magkandak ng rally kung walang permit. So sabi niya, no, the no permit, no rally policy must be informed. Kaya kayong mga rallyista, kung wala kang permit, automatic, you will be, uh, you will be disrupted. No? So, Napakaraming basis ang sinabi ni Ermita, sabi niya, dahil may intelligence report kami uh, na may mga anti-government groups daw na sumasala, sumasali sa mga relista and others. No? So, by the way, <clears throat> hindi lang yon ang ginawa ng uh, ating government nung time na yon. Nag-issue sila ng tinatawag na CPR or the Calibrated preemptive response. So under the calibrated uh, pre preemptive response or CPR, ang government ay pwede niyang uh, uh, pwede niyang evaluate ang right of the people to peaceably assemble. So uh, I repeat, without the permit. No? So pwede ba yun? Uh, pwede bang sabihin ng government na Okay, you cannot continue with your rally because you have no permit. So, uh, hindi pwede yun. No? According to the uh, Supreme Court, the uh, calibrated preemptive response of uh, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo and uh, Eduardo Orbita as the Executive Secretary is not valid. No, It violates the right of the people to peaceably assemb assemble and petition the government for redress and grievances. So let's go to the uh, case of uh, GSET and others versus Court of Appeals. Ito naman, no, this happened way back 1980s. Yung uh, public school teachers <clears throat> noong 1980s hindi na ibigay ang kanilang 13 month pay. Okay? Inulit ko ang public school teachers, hindi na ibigay ang kanilang 13 month pay. So, ang sabi ng government, pasensya na public school teachers, wala kayong 13 month pay ngayon dahil sa salary standardization law na kung saan mag-recruit ang ating government ng 47,000 new public school teachers nationwide. Kaya kailangan natin ang pondo at pasensya na ang inyong 13-month pay ang ma-sacrifice. Okay? Hindi na maibibigay ang inyong 13-month pay. So ang ginawa ng about 800 na teachers sa Metro Manila, hindi na sila nagklase. Nag-rally sila. No? During class time, instead na pupunta sa kanilang school to conduct classes, they went outside, pumunta sila sa kalsada at nag sila. Okay, nalaman na ito ngayon ng DEX. Okay, DEX noon pero DepEd ngayon. No? Nalaman ngayon ng DEX Secretary ang ginawa ng mga teachers. Kaya sabi ng DEX Secretary, kayong mga teachers, ito na ang return to work. Balik kayo sa inyong trabaho. Balik kayo sa inyong trabaho within 24 hours or else, matatanggal kayo sa service. Despite ang return to work order ng next secretary, hindi bumalik sa trabaho yung mga public school teachers na yun. Kagalit na ngayon ni uh, secretary, sinuspend niya ang mga teachers na yun. Buti sinuspend niya, hindi niya tinanggal. No? Kinasuhan niya ng administrative case, tapos sinuspend niya. Sabi ng mga public school teachers, you cannot suspend us because we are all we are we are only 
exercising our right of our right to peace of the assembly and our right of his, uh, of his speech and expression sabi naman ng uh, secretary deck secretary totoo na may karapatan kayo pero yung mga estudyante ninyo may karapatan din at ang karapatan nila ay right to education kaya nagbanggahan na naman yung dalawang rights constitutional rights that is the uh, rights of the uh, teacher to peace of the assemble and the rights of the children to education which will prevail sabi ng supreme court the right of education of the students will prevail so totoo na may karapatan ang mga teachers na maglali but it must be done with caution no it must be done with caution let's go to section 5 and ako isang controversial section din ito it is in relation to religion <clears throat> So, the right of religion has two aspects. We have the freedom to believe and we have the freedom to act in accordance with such belief. The freedom to believe is uh, unlimited, but the freedom to act in accordance with such belief is uh, limited. So, to explain it further, Yun. Let's go to the case of Estrada versus Solidad Escritor. What happened in this case? <clears throat> May isang uh, empleyado ng regional trial court na member ng Jehovah Witness. May practice pa lang Jehovah Witness na ganito. Kung kayo ay mag-asawa, pwede kayong maghiwalay kung yan ay papayagan ng congregation. At pwede na kayong mamili ng inyong partners, no? ng inyong succeeding partners. So, uh, provided na sila ay manunumpa sa congregation na yan na talaga ang kanilang partners. At ang tawag nila dyan ay Declaration of Pledging of Faithfulness. So, yan ang ginawa ng empleyado ng court. Siya ay member ng Jehovah Witness. Uh, naghiwalay sila sa kanyang mister, ang kanyang mister ay naghanap ng kanyang uh, bagong misis, siya naman naghanap ng kanyang bagong mister at naaayon yan sa kanilang religion. Provided, I, I repeat, manunong pa sila sa congregation na yan na ang kanilang asawa. Nalaman ni judge yun, ang kanyang boss. Sabi ni judge, empleyado ka ng government nakipaghiwalay ka sa inyong mister, nagkaroon ka pa ng anak sa lalaki na hindi mo asawa. So, that is grossly immoral. Kailangan na matanggal ka as empleyado ng government. Sabi na naman, sabi naman ni Solidad, totoo lahat ng sinabi mo, but hindi nangangahulugan na ako ay immoral. Kasi naghanap si mister ko ng kanyang misis, bagong misis, ako rin ay naghanap ng ating bagong mister at naaayon yan sa aming religion. Okay, so, liable ba si Solidad ng gross immoral conduct? Sabi ng Supreme Court, no. Because the conjugal arrangement was in conformity with the religious belief and with the approval of her congregation. And that is Jehovah Witness. Naayon naman sa kanilang religion yun. Kaya okay lang. No? So, Let's go to a more controversial case. Ruel Ibralinag and others versus Division Superintendent Schools of Cebu. Jehovah na naman to. Okay? This again involves the religion known as Jehovah Witnesses. Sa Cebu, uh, yung Division Superintendent sinuspend niya yung mga, di ko alam kung sinuspend niya o pitatalsik niya yung 68 uh, high school and elementary students ng public school. Bakit? 
dahil ayaw nila na makipag-cooperate sa national anthem and the reciting of patriotic pledge. Ayaw nila makipag-cooperate doon. So, sabi ng Division Superintendent of Cebu, <clears throat> Teka lang, nasa batas natin yon, Nasa batas natin yan na dapat na makipag-cooperate kayo sa National Anthem and Recitation of Patriotic Pledge. Or else. No? Or else ay uh, kayo ay uh, patatalsikin sa public school na ito. But notwithstanding the kahit na kung sila ay binigyan ng warning, still, they refuse to sing the national anthem or to join the national anthem and patriotic pledge. Kaya yun, tuloy na silang sinuspend or tinanggal. Nag-complain ng Jehovah Witness. Sabi ng Jehovah Witness, nasa religion namin yan eh. Na talagang ayaw namin, uh, hindi kami pwedeng mag-join ng national anthem and singing of the patriotic pledge. Nasa religion namin yan. Respect our religion. So, ano ang sabi ng Supreme Court? We must respect the religion. But hindi buo ang decision ng Supreme Court dito. May justices na nagsabi na mali ang decision ng majority. Kasi paano kung lahat na ay maging Jehovah Witnesses? Hindi wala na tayong flag. Wala na tayong national anthem. Wala na tayong patriotic pledge. Diba? So, medyo may mali sa decision but we cannot do something about it. It is a decision of the majority. Comes now the case of Church of Lukumi versus City of Heleya. <clears throat> this is a foreign, this is a foreign uh, case, no? May isang congregation. <clears throat> na nagpra-practice ng tinatawag natin na centuria religion. Na ang ginagawa nila is uh, they are cutting the uh, neck of animal, hayaan nilang mamatay, afterwards lulutuin nila, kakainin nila. So, uh, sa country kasi na yun, o sa community na yun, is uh, they are considering it as uh, medyo harsh against the animals. Diba? Imagine mo, uh, they are going to cut the neck of an animal, iwan lang dyan, okay? mawawalan siya ng dugo, mamamatay, afterwards, rurutu yung kakainin. So, nalaman ng City of Alilea ang uh, uh, ginagawa ng uh, Church of Lukumi na yon. Kaya nagpa siya ng ordinance. Sabi ng ordinance na yun, bawal ang uh, cruelty killing of an animal. Even for religious reason. No? So bawal ang uh, cruelty killing of animal, pati sa religion, religious uh, reasons. Nag-complain na ngayon ang Church of Lukumi. Sabi ng Church of Lukumi, Teka lang, bakit mukhang kami ang pinapatamaan ng ordinance na yan? No? Dapat, baliwalain ang ordinance na yan at respetuhin ang aming right of religion. O, ano ang sabi ng Supreme Court? Tama. No? Yung Church of Lukumi. Kaya yung ordinance ay binaliwala. So, the three last cases that were discussed shows, pinapakita niya kung gaano kalakas ang right of religion. No? Pinapakita niya talaga kung gaano kalakas ang right of religion. Hindi katulad ng right of speech and expression na medyo nababalanse, no? Let's go to section 6. In relation to liberty of abode. Uh, the liberty of uh, abode is uh, in changing the same is uh, yon. Uh, <clears throat> it is more explained in the case of uh, Ferdinand Marcos et al versus Manglapus. But we discussed this before, no? Alam na natin to, itong kaso ni uh, Fernando, ay, Fer, Fer, Ferdinand Marcos versus uh, uh, Raul Manglapos. Alam natin lahat na nung after the Edson Revolution, 
si President Marcos at ang kanyang pamilya ay dinala sa Hawaii. No? So, uh, gusto nilang bumalik. But uh, sabi ng Korea administration ay hindi pwede nang hindi pwedeng bumalik dito. No? So, sabi ni uh, uh, Ferdinand Marcos, how about our liberty of abode? You violated it. So, ano ang sabi ng Supreme Court? Uh, ang ibig sabihin ng liberty of abode is the liberty to go from the Philippines to go outside. But it does not include, <laughs> hindi daw niya i-include, yung uh, coming from outside, going to the Philippines, katulad ni Marcos. And um, at the same time, Diba? Ito yung uh, diniscuss natin na uh, residual power of the president okay? when we discuss the executive branch of the government. Let's go to section 7 in relation to right of information. So, uh, let's go to the case of uh, Bantay <clears throat> Republic versus Kamilek. By the way, uh, information refers to the facts or opinions provided and uh, received during the uh, course of daily life. Okay, so yung information, lahat ng information na pwede mong uh, kunin, no? literal na, inform, uh, na information. So that is, that is included in the right to information. So, what happened in the case of uh, Bantay versus uh, uh, Kamelek? There is what we call the uh, party list. Diba? We discussed in the this, uh, we discussed in the legislative branch of the government that there are two classifications of uh, representatives. We have the district representatives and we have the party list representatives so paano ba nai-elect ang district representative no problem kilala natin kung sino ang tatakbong this district representative because he is going to mga kampanya yan may poster yan kaya alam natin na siya ang kung manalo siya siya ang uupo district representative how about the party list representative Yan ang naging problema dito. Kasi may mga party list na basta linagay lang doon natatakbong party list. Nung tinanong, na, nung tinanong kung sino ang magiging representative kung mananalo ang party list na yon, imbes na sagutin ng Kamelek, ang ginawa ng Kamelek ay uh, Huwag nyo nang pansinin yan, huwag kayong mag-alala kasi kung mananalo ang mga party list na yan, pagkatapos ng election day ay malalaman ninyo kung sino ang maging nominis o kung sino ang maging party list representative. So unfair ano, ang sitwasyon na ine-elect natin ang party list na yan pero hindi natin alam kung sino maging representative niya kung mananalo. No? At inulit ko, sabi ng Kamelek, huwag kayong mag-alala, malalaman nyo din after the election. <laughs> Pwede ba yun? Okay? So, sabi ng Supreme Court, the Kamelek must publish the names of the nominees of the different party list groups. Okay? So that, because that is an information that we must have. How can we elect for something na hindi natin alam kung sino ang magiging representative niya. No, paano kung kalaban pala natin yun? Isn't it? So, <clears throat> let's go to um, Senate of the Philippines versus Executive Secretary Eduardo Armita. So, uh, nagsimula ang kaso na ito <clears throat> dahil sa privilege speech ni uh, uh, Juan Ponce Enrile. According to Juan Ponce Enrile, uh, to Senator Juan Ponce Enrile, napakadami daw uh, overpricing sa executive branch yung mga 
yung mga different projects natin sa executive branch na ginagawa ng executive branch ay napakadami daw corruption at overpricing. Kaya nagkaroon ng interest ang Congress natin na mag-conduct ng investigation. Kaya sabi ng uh, Congress natin, kayong mga secretaries ng executive branch ng ating government, we are inviting you for a uh, we are inviting you for a uh, hearing. So uh, nung time, nung day ng hearing or one day before the hearing, biglang uh, nagbigay ng letter si uh, Executive Secretary na sa Congress natin na pwedeng mag-ask ng extension. Okay? Give us extension uh, before the secretaries of uh, the executive branch will report to your uh, hearing. Pero hindi pinagbigyan kasi wala ng time. Immediately thereafter, ay, uh, ang executive branch ng government ay nag-issue ng isang order na nagsasabi na kayo, legislative branch of the government, respetuhin ninyo ang separation of powers. Hindi pwedeng basta-basta pumupunta ang sekretary namin dyan at mag-testify sa hearing ninyo sa legislative branch. So pwede ba yun? Pwedeng sabihin ng President na Ops, kayo mga cabinet members, mga secretaries ko, hindi kayo pwedeng pupunta sa Senate for a hearing. Ah. Okay? Sabi ng Supreme Court, the prohibition of members of cabinet as well as other officers in the executive department from attending investigation in aid of legislation by Congress would violate the right of the people to information on matters of public concern. Kaya hindi pwedeng gawin ng executive branch yun. No? <clears throat> Let's go to the case of Sabio versus Gordon. <clears throat> they, uh, when President Aquino became, ay, when Corazon Aquino became the president, nag-issue siya ng executive order number one. And uh, that is creating the PCGG or the Presidential Commission on Good Gover Government. No? That is a PCGG. So, nakalagay sa uh, provision ng Executive Order Number 1 na ang PCGG Commissioners, yung Presidential Commission on Good Governance Commissioners, ay hindi pwedeng ma-investigate uh, in their acts in relation to the performance of their official duty. Hindi sila pwedeng ma-investigate. Okay. Nagkaroon na ngayon ng um, <clears throat> uh, may isang company na nasequester o na-confiscate ng PCGG. At may allegation ng corruption, may allegation ng irregularity. Kaya sabi ng uh, Philcomsat ito yung corporation na nakakiskate naka may irregularity na ginawa ng PCGG kaya sabi ng Senate i-investigate namin yan sabi naman ng executive branch ng ating government hindi pwedeng i-investigate yan kasi nakalagay sa executive order number no. 1 ni President Aquino na bawal i-investigate ang commissioners ng PCGG pwede ba yon so Naaayon ba sa Constitution ang Executive Order Number no. 1 ni President Aquino? Sabi ng Supreme Court, no. The PCGG commissioners may not refuse to appear before a Senate committee conducting investigation involving the irregularities because it will violate the right of information on matters of public concern of the people. <clears throat> Let's go to uh, <clears throat> Section 8, Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution. The right of the people, including those employed in the public and private sectors, to form unions. 
So, um, <clears throat> ito yung, uh, to explain this is we have the United Pepsi Cola Supervisory Union versus La Guesma. So, um, <clears throat> sa ating labor code kasi, may nakalagay doon na ang managerial employees o ang supervisorial employees ay hindi pwedeng maging members ng labor union. Ang pwede lang maging members ng labor union ay yung tinatawag natin na rank and file employees. Ang rank and file employees, yan yung mga workers. Ang kanilang head, katulad ng supervisors, katulad, uh, katulad ng uh, ano pa kaya? Uh, inspectors, ganun. They are uh, known as supervisory employees or managerial employees. Kaya kung may, kung may employees union, ang mga members, yung mga workers lang. Yung mga head ng workers, katulad ng inspectors, katulad ng supervisors, katulad ng managers, ang tawag natin sa kanila ay managerial employees, hindi sila pwedeng maging member ng labor union. Question na ngayon ng managerial employees ng Pepsi Cola yun. Sabi ng managerial employees, kahit boss kami, kahit na kung may authority kami sa company, dapat members kami ng labor union. Dapat i-declare natin na unconstitutional ang provision ng labor code na nagsasabi na bawal kami. Dapat payagan kaming maging member ng labor union. So ang issue ba ay tama ba ang sinasabi ng managerial employees na dapat maging member din sila ng labor union? Sabi ng Supreme Court, mali. Okay? Ang managerial employees are those who assist in the act of uh, assist and act in the confidential capacity or who have access to confidential matters. Ang managerial employees kasi, they are representing the boss. Kaya hindi sila pwedeng maging uh, by nature of their functions, hindi sila pwedeng maging member ng labor union. Kasi paano kung may plano ang labor union laban sa boss? Tapos members ang managerial employees doon. What will now happen to the labor union? Di ba? Okay. <clears throat> Let's go to section 9. Right to uh, just compensation or it states that the private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. Okay. So... Ito ay isang <clears throat> sikat na kaso. The City of Manila versus Chinese Community. Ang essence kasi ng expropriation ay ganito. Di ba? Na-discuss ko uh, a while back that there are three inherent powers of the government. We have the power of, ay, we have the police power, we have the power of expropriation or imminent domain, and we have the power of taxation. The essence of power of imminent domain or expropriation is a private property is to be taken and it will be converted into public use. So I repeat, a private property, it will be taken after payment of just compensation and it will be converted into public use. Ang ginawa ng city of Manila dito, pumunta sila sa private cemetery sa Binondo, Manila. So, sabi ng City of Manila, itong private cemetery ng Binondo, um, kunin na lang natin by virtue of uh, expropriation, the power of imminent domain. Kunin natin, tapos i-convert natin into children's park, yung private cemetery. Sabi naman ng Chinese, eh paano naman ang mga patay namin dyan? Paano ang All Saints Day namin? Kung sakaling, i-flatten ninyo ang cemetery natin at gawin yung children's park. Sabi naman ng City, of, uh, City Government of Manila, ay naku, huwag na, huwag na kayong mag-complain. Ginagawa, ginagawa namin ang aming inherent power 
of expropriation or imminent domain. So, the issue went to the Supreme Court. Pwede bang kunin ng city of Manila yung uh, private cemetery na yan at i-convert into uh, children's park? Sabi ng Supreme Court, no. If a private property is already devoted for public use, hindi pwedeng i-expropriate yan o kukunin yan ng government at i-convert into another public use. Okay, do not forget that. Kaya kung kayo ay tanungin, ano ang natutunan ninyo sa City of Manila versus Chinese community? If a, uh, ang natutunan nyo ay dapat na, na ito, no? If a private property is already devoted for public use, it cannot be expropriated for another public use or public purpose. So, um, pwedeng mag-expropriate o mag-conduct ng exercise ang power of eminent domain provided that it is for public use, kailangan na magbayad ng just compensation at kailangan na may due process. Hindi basta-basta kukunin ang property na yan na sasabihin na, okay, ginagawa namin ang, our, ang aming power of eminent domain. Kailangan na may process na sundin. No? Paano ba ang process na yun? Dapat na may complaint at ang complaint na yan ay isasampa sa court at ang court ang mag-determine. No? If nandyan ang public use, if kung magkano ang just compensation, so ang court ang mag-determine. So, comes now the case of Manotok versus National Housing Authority. What happened in this case? <clears throat> May isang community known as Tabunting Estate. Baka dikit-dikit ang mga bahay dito. Ang uh, tawa nila dyan is Tabunting uh, Estate. So, uh, nasunog yun. Okay, so uh, it is uh, consisted of... Uh, uh, 52,000 square meters. Ito malawak din. At meron, maliban sa Tabunting Estate, ay may, tinata ay may tinatawag sila na uh, Sunog Apog Area, which is consisted of 72,000 square meters in Tondo, Metro Manila. Okay? Nasa Tondo, Metro Manila siya. Yung uh, Tabunting Estate at yung Sunog Apog Area. Nasunog yun, di ba? Napanindigan niya ang kanyang pangalan, no? So, nasunog ang dalawang, uh, dalawang places na yun. So, uh, nalaman ng government natin na kawawa yung nawalan ng tirahan doon. Kaya ang ginawa ng ating uh, government <clears throat> is uh, gumawa siya ng batas na sinasabi na itong uh, tabunting estate at uh, sunog uh, apog area Sa government na ito. At huwag kayong mag-alala, yung owner, we will be paying you just compensation. At i-distribute namin ito sa nangangailangan. Nag-complain yung owners. Sabi ng owners, ano bang ginagawa mo government? Bakit mo kinukuha ang aming properties tapos binibigyan lang ng bayan agad-agad? Sabi ng government, eh ginagawa lang namin ang tinatawag natin na power of expropriation or imminent domain. No? So, pwede ba yun? <laughs> pwede ba yun na biglang sasabihin ng government na, oh, ito ng bayan, akin ng property na yan. Hindi pwede yun. No? Kasi anong na-discuss natin kanina, dapat na may due process. Dapat na may complaint for expropriation, isasampayan sa court at ang court ang mag-determine. No? <clears throat> so, let's go to Section 10, Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution. Uh, it is the right against impairment of the obligations of contract. Ang essence ng right na ito ay, kung may pinag-usapan ang dalawang tao, hindi pwedeng makialam ang government. Okay? Yan ang pinaka-essence. Kung may pinag-usapan ang dalawang tao, hindi pwedeng makialam ang government. Kung makialam ang government, hindi naaayon sa saligang batas yun. No? Yan ang ibig sabihin ng 
no law impairing the obligation of contracts shall be passed. So, ang um, sikat na kaso in order to explain this is yung Ortigas versus Fiati Bank. This is a very, very old case. No, This is an old case that happened way back 1950s, 1960s. Ang nangyari kasi doon ay <clears throat> ganito. This is during the time na ang Mandaluyong ay municipality pa, hindi pa siya city. No? So, uh, <clears throat> there were two parcels of lot which were owned by uh, uh, Ortigas family. So, sabi ng Ortigas family, itong two parcels of, of lot na nasa Mandaluyong ibebenta ibebenta namin okay kaya binili ng uh, uh, Padilla and Angeles family so I repeat ah uh, yung that yung two parcels of lot owned by Ortigas family yon <coughs> binenta na nila sa dalawang tao yung two parcels of lot na yon at mayroon silang special agreement doon. Sabi ng nagbenta, ibebenta ko sa iyo ito provided gawin mo lang siyang residential. Pang-residential lang siya. Hindi mo siya pwedeng i-convert into commercial lot. Pumayag naman yung dalawa. Yung yung dalawang panig, no? Yung naka yung nakabili ng lupa na yon Binentan naman niya sa Fiat Bank. Okay? Pinasa niya sa bangko. No? So, yung bangko naman na yon, kinonvert niya into commercial lot. So, nag-complain na ngayon yung Ortigas family. Sabi ng Ortigas family, oops, teka lang, teka lang, teka lang. Binenta namin ang lupa na yan dahil ang special agreement natin ay pang-residential lang hindi nyo pwedeng i-convert into commercial. No? So, sabi ng Fiat Bank, ay pasensya na. Kasi yung buong ispan ng lupa, hindi lang yung dalawang lot na ito, lahat-lahat na nang nakapalibot, including yung lot na ito, ay kinonvert ng ating government ng commercial lot. It was already converted by the government ng commercial lot. Kaya pasensya na kung hindi namin susundin yung, yung pinag-usapan ninyo noon na dapat pang-residential lang ito. No? So yun, nag-complain na yung Ortigas family. Sabi ng Ortigas family, ikaw government, bakit mo kinonvert yan into commercial lot? E ang usapan namin hanggang residential lot lang yan. No? Pwede bang, uh, at ang basis pa ng Ortigas family ay, That is our contract. Ikaw government na kialam ka. So you violated Section 10, Article 3 of the Constitution. Tama ba yung Ortigas family? To tell you no. Sabi ng Supreme Court, totoo na may pinag-usapan kayo. Pero ginawa ng government yan because of police power. Because according to police power, kailangan na... Uh, pasensya na ako sa kalimakan priskate ang properties ninyo o makialam ang government sa inyo, pasensya na provided it is for common good. Kailangan na i-convert natin ang lupa na yan into commercial lot kasi padami ng padami na ang mga tao at kumukulang na tayo ng business establishment. No? So, let's go to section 11. Free access to the courts and quasi-judicial bodies. Uh, <clears throat> alam nyo, may tinatawag tayo na indigent persons. Ang mga indigent persons, ito yung walang kakayahan sa buhay. Kung wala silang kakayahan sa buhay, dapat lang na uh, bigyan natin sila ng tulong. Kung sakaling wala silang abogado, they must be provided with one under the rules of court. At ang basis ng rules of court ay ito. Section 11 ng Article 3 of the 1987 Constitution which provides that free access to the courts and quasi-judicial bodies and adequate legal assistance 
shall not be denied to any person by reason of poverty. Hindi pwedeng may deny ang free access to course dahil sa kahirapan. No? So that is this is the first part of the Bill of Rights. So, kung hindi ako nagkakamali, ang discussion natin ay more or less two and a half hours sa first part pa lang. Kaya dapat maintindihan ninyo kung bakit ko hinati ang Bill of Rights. Kasi kung hindi ko hahatiin yan, baka abutin ng discussion ng five to six hours in one in one uh, part, di ba? So, di ko alam kung paano mag-discuss in uh, Zoom ng straight six hours, no? So uh, that's it, and uh, we will be scheduling your uh, recitation and explanation next meeting. Thank you. <clears throat>